In this chapter, you are going to study about the structures in the neck region. Neck is divided into two regions for convenience of study. Look at this picture which shows the right side of the neck of an ox. The green line indicates the position of jugular furrow. The region above this line is the dorsal aspect of the neck and the region below is the ventral aspect of the neck. Note the ventral aspect of the neck lying between the two parallel green lines drawn here. To expose the ventral aspect of the neck, make a longitudinal incision beginning from the caudal angle of the mandible to manubrium sterni. Make another parallel longitudinal incision at the jugular furrow like this. Then reflect the skin flap upwards. Care should be taken to preserve the cutaneous nerves of this region. Then clean the superficial fascia to expose the muscles. These are the cutaneous nerves of neck which are derived from the ventral primary branches of the second and sixth cervical spinal nerve. They pierce the sternomandibularis at regular intervals. This long muscle is sternocephalicus which extends from manubrium sterni to skull. It consists of a superficial part called sternomandibularis and a deep part known as sternomastoideus. Both these parts originate from the manubrium sterni. The sternomandibularis passes upward and forward to be inserted to the masseter and lateral face of the angle of jaw. The sternomastoideus is mostly overlapped by the superficial division and passes upward and forward to be inserted to the mastoid process, wings of atlas and basilar tubercles. This large blue colored tubercular structure is the external jugular vein lodged in the jugular furrow. The jugular furrow is found on the ventrolateral aspect of the neck bounded by the sternocephalicus below and brachiocephalicus above. External jugular vein is the most common site for intravenous injection in ox. In front of the thoracic inlet, it receives the cephalic vein. Are you able to find two muscular bands on either side of the trachea and below the sternocephalicus muscle? This is the sternothyrohyoideus. It originates from the manubrium sterni. Then it passes upwards and forwards. The muscle divides at about the middle of the neck into two bands, the thyroid and hyoid bands. This is the thyroid band which is inserted to the thyroid cartilage of larynx. 
Note the hyoid band passing upward to be inserted to the hyoid bone. Omohyoidus is a thin, elongated muscle originating from the cervical vertebrae to the hyoid bone. Now the sternocephalicus muscle is cut at its middle and reflected on either side. This white colored structure is a carotid sheath situated on the dorsolateral aspect of the trachea. Clean the carotid sheath to expose the structures inside. The contents of the carotid sheath include the common carotid artery and vagosympathetic nerves. You can also find the tracheal duct which runs superficially in the carotid sheath. a nerve on the ventral aspect of the esophagus carefully. This is the recurrent laryngeal nerve supplying the laryngeal muscles except cricothyroidus. If you carefully clean the fascia, you can find a thin walled tube, the internal jugular vein. Note this pink color tube above the trachea. This is the cervical part of esophagus which extends from pharynx to stomach. Trachea is a cartilaginous tube extending from the larynx to lungs. Dorsally, it is related with esophagus. Are you able to find a lobular structure on the first few rings of the trachea on its lateral aspect? This is a lobe of thyroid gland. These nodules situated on the sides of the esophagus are the cervical lymph nodes and they are connected with efferent lymphatics. Now the esophagus is cut at its middle and reflected on either side. Then you can find the longest collie muscle covering the ventral aspects of the bodies of cervical vertebrae. It extends up to the bodies of first six dorsal vertebrae. Trapezius it is a broad triangular muscle situated immediately beneath the skin on the dorsal aspect of the neck and dorsum. It consists of two parts, trapezius cervicalis, a cervical part, and trapezius dorsalis, dorsal part. The cervical part originates from the ligamentum mucae and the dorsal part from supraspinous ligament and is inserted to the middle of the scapular spine and scapula fascia. Its lower border is in close opposition with the upper border of the brachiocephalicus muscle. Brachiocephalicus This is a large muscle extending from the head, passed through the neck and inserted into the arm. The upper border of this muscle is in close opposition with the lower border of trapezius. Its lower border forms the upper boundary of jugular furrow. It consists of a dorsal part called 
Cledo occipitalis and a ventral part called Cledo mastoideus. The demarcation between these two parts is being identified by the exit of cutaneous branches of the ventral divisions of the cervical spinal nerves, homo transversarius. Cut the brachiocephalicus in front of the scapula and reflect it towards the origin. Now, this band like muscle, which is fully covered by the brachiocephalicus, is homo transversarius. This large, thick, fan shaped muscle situated behind the latissimus dorsi is serratus cervicus. 